Ringland failure is a huge problem with STIs and Subaru WRXs that carry the EJ motor. Becoming a little bit more educated about what Ringland failure is may help you actually prevent it if you own a Subaru that has an EJ motor. We all know that one of the most common problems and one of the biggest downfalls of the EJ motor is when your car, after getting tuned, after normal driving, after anything, gets Ringland failure and you could potentially lose your engine. Your engine could fail. Stick through this short explanation video if you wanna know what Ringland failure is, why it's happening and how you can prevent it. And before we get started guys, if you wanna see more cool automotive Subaru or WRX stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. So what is Ringland failure? So the EJ engine, like any other engine, is going through a combustion cycle. The piston's going down and then it's going back up, right? And then it's you have your explosion, it gets pushed back down, that generates power, then the pressure or the engine cycle is gonna push it back up and so forth. So your, your piston is going up and down, right? That downward motion is the explosion happening. That's when oxygen and fuel are getting pushed into that combustion chamber and you know, it's a combustion chamber. They're combusting and that's creating the power to let your car go forward. But the way Ringland failure starts is with knock or detonation. I'm sure you've heard this word, engine knock, rod knock. Knock is a huge word, especially used in the Subaru community. However, it is used throughout the car community, but most commonly with turbocharged engines. What knock means is that you're having detonation. And what detonation means is you ha are having a second explosion basically. So you have the normal combustion of the combustion cycle, but what detonation and knock mean means that there is something else happening. So when you have detonation or knock, and I've said that like a thousand times, your combustion happens in the piston, pushing the piston down, but after the combustion happens, there's another detonation in that cycle. So then they're fighting for space, right? When something combusts, it wants to take up all that space. And that's why the combustion cycle is so successful. It takes up all the space and shoves the piston down. But it took up all the space. That second detonation took up all the space and they're fighting for the space. And then you have an unequal load on the piston as it's getting pushed down. And if it's an unequal load, it can actually drive one of the side walls of the piston where the combustion is happening into the sleeve of the cylinder. So imagine it this way. If the combustion was happening and it's straight, right, it's vertical and it's coming down and that second detonation is basically going to knock it to one side and it's within a sleeve. So it's gonna hit and that's when you can have Ringland failure. Now Ringland failure, I'm gonna throw up a picture right now. Ringland failure is when you're looking at the piston, you have the crown of the piston, which is the top. You're gonna have the oil control ring and the compression ring. Now Ringland failure is when one of those fails, breaks, gets damaged. So often that's gonna happen when you have detonation. It's gonna hit the sidewall, the sleeve of the cylinder. It's then gonna break one of the pieces that we're gonna break, the crown, the oil control ring, or the compression ring. And then you've had Ringland failure. Now, what does that actually do when that breaks? Does it catastrophically stop your engine? No, it actually makes way for more problems. Ringland failure in and of itself isn't gonna destroy your engine. It's gonna allow other things to destroy your engine. Oil's gonna start seeping through the ring. Your combustion is gonna start getting through there. So it's gonna try to fill the space next to the piston. And you're either gonna destroy your cylinder. You're not gonna get enough oil. It's gonna starve the engine. And those are the things that are really gonna destroy the engine. So in essence, that's what rod knock is. And if you get rod knock, take it to a dealer, take it to a mechanic, figure it out, solve it. It's gonna destroy your engine if you keep driving it. Why is rod knock happening? So this is a more unsure science and we're gonna kind of answer that with what can you do to prevent it, right? Because they kind of tie in together. One of the main things you can do to prevent it is get fresh gas, right? If you get the highest octane fresh gas, you're gonna have a very consistent combustion cycle. Your engine is designed for pretty optimal gas. It wants gas that will combust at the right time, at the right temperature, at the right moment. If you have old or impure gas, it may not do that, and it might throw that cycle off, causing detonation. So get fresh gas. Go to a high volume gas station. Make sure tons of people are pumping gas. Make sure tons of people are pumping the highest octane you can get in your state. Another semi-common thing you can do is you can actually modify your engine and you can get an air oil separator and that's just going to keep oil from getting into the intake and that's an inexpensive way to help better protect your engine. What are the major ways to tell if you have ringland failure? Not all ringland failure makes a noise. You're not necessarily going to notice a change in your driving even though I said you did. That's like if you have significant ringland failure. Most ringland failure is a crack or a small failure in one of those rings, and you're gonna be able to keep driving. So there's a couple things that you can do and a couple ways to check if it's happening. The number one is if you're burning oil, right? You have the oil control ring, 
And if that breaks, right, oil is going to pass through, you're going to burn oil in your combustion cycle, and your oil level is going to be low. So it's a really good thing to do every thousand miles, every 500 miles if you're super worried, just check your oil level. A quick and easy thing to do, and it'll tell you a lot about what's happening with your engine. Sometimes in the Subaru community, that oil getting past that oil control ring is called blow-by just so that if you're doing more research, that is blow by oil and then is being burned in the cylinder. So yeah, the oil is the biggest way to tell if you have ringland failure because again, it's gonna burn oil. So how can you prevent it? There's a multitude of things that you can do to prevent it. Number one on our list is getting fresh gasoline. So go to a gas station that has a lot of people going there, get the highest octane you can, whether it's 93 or 91, depending on your state. The next thing you can do is change your oil regularly. Regular oil changes means their oil is more fresh, it has less particulates in it, it's been used less, it's a little bit thinner. Being thinner is not always a good thing, but in this case, the engine will be able to cycle the oil through faster. I know a lot of STI owners, uh, and they recommend typically between 2,000 and 3,000 miles, and all the guys that I know that have been doing 2,000 miles have never had ring line failure. Another thing you can do is upgrade your J-pipe. This is gonna require a tune, but upgrading your J-pipe to something that has a higher flow is gonna remove more heat out of the engine. If you can remove more heat, the pressure is going to go down. You're going to be putting less pressure on those pistons, on the rings. And even if you're getting detonation with lower pressure, you might actually be able to operate like that under normal conditions and not see ring land failure. And the last thing you can do to prevent ring land failure is get your car tuned. Tuners can often do some work. If you're getting rod knock, if you're getting early detonation, you might be just getting that. It might just be a characteristic of your car. It isn't necessarily always going to end in immediate ring land failure. So try to take it into a tuner, see if they can readjust the timing, readjust the air fuel ratios and readjust everything about your engine so that you can reduce the knock that you're experiencing or eliminate it altogether. I do recommend doing a combination of everything that I just told you so that you can best protect your engine. I wanted that to be a really quick and easy and brief explanation of ring line failure. I'm going to be coming out with a more in-depth video soon. I'm about to get my hands on an actual piston from an STI engine that has ring line failure so I can show you guys. So I'm going to do an in-depth video, show you what's going on there. But this video is just mainly a quick overview of what it is, how to fix it, how to diagnose it, and things you can do and, and all that cool stuff. So guys, in the comment section, let me know what you guys do to prevent ring land failure. Have you had it? What have you? What did you have to do? Have you had an engine fail because of ring land failure? I'd love to hear it, and everyone else watching this video would love to hear it. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching.